Family gatherings can often be complicated, but this G20 get-together was particularly tricky. So much so, the leaders opted not to stand together for a traditional family photo. A clear sign the G20 isn't united on multiple fronts, particularly Russia's war on Ukraine. Being responsible here also means that we must end the war. If the war does not end, it will be difficult for the world to move forward. Numerous member countries have remained neutral regarding Russia's aggression, putting them at odds with the majority of their G20 colleagues. We support a worthy role for Russia in the G20 and other multilateral formats. We believe that nobody has a right to deprive Russia of its reasonable right to participate in multilateral formats. Russia's Vladimir Putin shunned this year's event here in Bali and sent his foreign minister in his place. By contrast, Ukraine's Vladimir Zelensky made his G20 debut, addressing leaders via video link. We respect the rules and we are people of our world. Ukraine has always been a leader in peacekeeping efforts and the world has witnessed it. And if Russia says that it supposedly wants to end this war, let it prove it with actions. All problems are with the Ukrainian side, which is categorically refusing negotiations and putting forward conditions that are obviously unrealistic and do not correspond to the situation. China's president is making his return to the world political stage after a two-year absence, rebuilding diplomatic ties during numerous sideline meetings. As we manage these challenges, we need to work towards a stable, prosperous and peaceful Indo-Pacific. Instead of tackling their challenging global agenda, it seems day one was more focused on the G20's internal affairs. Melinda Nusafora, TRT World, Bali.